Hi, I'm Jeff Murrah, and I want to welcome you to True Texas History, where today we're going to talk about the Anahuac Disturbances. Um, I meant to talk about it yesterday, but I got tied up doing some things. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, because the Anahuac Disturbances, uh, let's go ahead and set uh, June 10th, 1832, is the day... Uh, they occurred because that's when uh, John Bradburn went ahead and imprisoned um, William Barrett Travis, uh, William H. Jack, and 15 other members of the colony. Uh, <clears throat> he didn't have a per, uh, jail per se, so he locked him up in the uh, brick kiln for uh, the military outposts located there at Anahuac. And uh, in the process of things, uh, he had those people captive, uh, John Austin and some of the local colonists. Uh, they were furious about uh, what Bradburn had done and they went ahead and they captured 20 soldiers and held them hostage until Bradburn went ahead and released the men that he had illegally seized. Now, that's typically what uh, most people know about what happened, but uh, let's go ahead and look at some of the backstory and then you'll understand a little more about what happened. Okay, back uh, two years before that, uh, they had passed uh, the law of, uh, I forget what it's called, the law of 1830. I forget whatever particular uh, date it was because uh, the Mexican system, they typically have the date in the year. But um, with that law, uh, Mexico was taking some drastic steps to go ahead and change things. Part of what they wanted to change, they wanted to introduce uh, more settlers into the area of Texas that uh, were aliens, spoke a different language, and had a different culture than the Americans because they felt that those that were coming from the American states were uh, too alien from the Mexican culture. So they were purposely trying to put people in that didn't mix. Uh, now, as part of the plan, they were going to no longer allow people to come in uh, from the American states. Uh, they were also taking steps to uh, intentionally settle Mexican convicts uh, into the colonies that were already there. Uh, I mean, think of it in modern terms, how you would feel if you had uh, a bunch of criminals and felons and sexual predators intentionally settled in your community. Let's say uh, the government decided to go ahead and uh, violate property rights uh, and, you know, building restrictions. And they decided to put a, an apartment complex in your suburban neighborhood and populate it uh, with felons and uh, child predators. Uh, I think you get the picture. Uh, now, not only that, uh, they went ahead and started clamping down on uh, some of the land titles uh, given to the settlers because, uh, you know, they were they were using the paperwork to put the squeeze on them. Uh, they, uh, the Mexican government was also not happy with the recent um, decision to go ahead and settle uh, Liberty, Texas. They didn't want it there, you know, too close to the coast, too close to uh, the United States territory, uh, well, the United States state of uh, Louisiana, uh, it, it was just, they didn't like it. And so they took steps to go ahead and counterman things. And so you had uh, John Bradburn who came in there. And of course they called him Juan Bradburn because he was such a sellout to Mexico. Uh, I mean, the guy was originally from Virginia, but... Uh, he uh, was put in a tough position as the enforcer of this law of uh, April of 1830. And uh, in doing so, he decided to uh, shut down all ports uh, coming into Texas with the exception of Anahuac. 
uh, you know, that would be the only port. Now, the, the problem with that uh, is that it essentially set up a de facto blockade uh, because uh, only shallow vessels could get into Anawai. And of course, you know, Bradburn just wanted to go ahead and collect the taxes, make money, and use the excuse of the law as a way to go ahead and get cover for it. Uh, the colonists were furious because this would not allow the deeper draft ships uh, filled with other people and supplies to go ahead and come in. Uh, and uh, some of the locals uh, decided to speak out about it. And among these locals were uh, William Barrett Travis and uh, William H. Jack and 17 others, or 15 others, because there were 17 in total. Uh, and Bradburn, uh, rather than go ahead and um, deal with it in a way to go ahead and settle things. Uh, he took the uh, heavy-handed approach and went ahead and uh, arrested them. And in arresting them, uh, he wanted to try them in military courts. And they say, we did not commit any military crime. We need to be tried in a civilian court. And uh, this is uh, some of what's behind the Anahuac disturbances because when you understand the backstory, uh, it makes a lot more sense. Now, another issue that was going on is that under uh, John Bradburn, he was uh, impressing the slaves of the colonists. He, uh, you know, as the official of the Mexican government, was using slave labor without compensating the owners. Essentially, he was absconding with their. Uh, their labor, uh, not wanting to reimburse them for it, just kind of, uh, hey, this guy's going to work for me, and you're not going to get paid for it, and that's that. And some of the locals weren't taking too kindly to that issue uh, either. So uh, there were a series of issues uh, that led up to this blow up. Uh, now, John Austin, who was one of the ones that uh, went ahead and helped seize the soldiers, uh, he was no relation to uh, Stephen F. Austin, you know, even though they had the same last name. Uh, if anything, uh, John Austin uh, was a veteran of the uh, long uh, filibuster expedition. You can watch my video on the uh, long expedition to get a little more background there. But he was a uh, long-term a filibuster that had settled in Texas in that area. And also in that area, you know, uh, of liberty, uh, you, you still had a few of the Frenchmen left over from the Champdale Isle uh, settlement uh, from years before. So uh, this was an interesting area. Uh, and this was also an area where some of the leftover pirates uh, still were operating and living uh, at that time. So uh, Anahuac was uh, quite a center, far, you know, far cry from what it is today. But I hope you enjoyed it and that this cleared up some things. If you have any questions, feel free to put them below. I'll be glad to get to them. Uh, you're very welcome, uh, Art. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And until next time, this is Jeff Morrell wishing you vaya con Dios. Goodbye.